Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 One Sustainability Conference, our annual global sustainability event. My name is James Rosenstein. I'm a board of the One Business World. We now have the pleasure to welcome Christina Deligiani, Public Policy Officer at EPLO, the Institute for Sustainable Investment. Christina will tell us more about transitioning from CSR to ESG. Christina. Thank you, James, so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with uh, such a distinguished uh, audience and a distinguished uh, panelist. We will be talking about the transition that companies have to make from CSR to ESG and how this is possible. I'm Christina Deligiani. I'm the po Public Policy Officer of the Institute for Sustainable Development at EPLO, the European Public Law Organization, an international organization with um, permanent observer status to the United Nations General Assembly and Very Impact, which is the spin-off of the Institute. So uh, let's start with a very small uh, history, some context uh, about the history and evolution of ESG, how we came to talk uh, about ESG nowadays. So uh, in the uh, 1980s, issues relating to the environment and to sustainability have, uh, were starting to be looked up uh, and um, mainly uh, people and businesses have been looking into uh, the environment, health and safety aspects of their um, employees and of their companies, um, especially through regulations. In the 1990s, what we see is the development of the definition of sustainable development. So then everybody started looking into the overall sustainability of businesses, yet without specific ways into looking into that. The concept of uh, sustainability was very vague, and that is how it was looked into. In the, uh, in the next decade, we, we see the rise of Corporate Social Responsibility, or CSR. Um, the, this emergence of this concept was the way that companies started looking into the sustainability aspects for their development. And uh, what we saw was corporate philanthropy and employee volunteerism were used to align with social issues. From uh, the 2020s onwards, what we see is the emergence, the evolution of ESG principles, the environmental, social and governance uh, principles and criteria. Um, and this has become the prevalent ones across the, across the business world and society at a global scale. Nowadays, ESG is often used interchangeably with corporate social responsibility and or corporate sustainability. However, however, ESG is much, much more than that. So CSR versus ESG, what is the difference? Why it matters? CSR is very vague as a concept. ESG, on the other hand, is very specific and quite measurable. So CSR is, um, is, a, is an internal affair of a company. Is, it is up to the company to look into it internally. It is a self-regulating model. It defines the company CSR responsibilities and roles. It includes departments such as the human resources department. It includes environmental aspects. It includes stakeholder engagement, community development, and workplace daily practices. Whereas on the other hand, um, ESG is the quantifiable measure of a company's sustainability. We're talking about measurable criteria and indicators that have to do with environmental aspects, such as the energy consumption of a, of a company, the pollution control, how a company tackles climate change, climate change mitigation and adaptation, what a company does in terms of its waste management. And when it comes to the social aspects, we see many indicators on human rights, on child and forced labor, on the community welfare, on stakeholder health and safety. Governance is also important when it comes to ESG. We're talking about the quality of management, the board members' independence, how you mitigate conflicts of interest within the operation of a company, 
and uh, very much uh, we're looking into board diversity. We have to note that without CSR, there would be no ESG. However, the two are not the same concepts. They're uh, far from interchangeable. And why is that? Well, CSR as an approach is based on the concept of doing well by doing good. Whereas on ESG, we're talking about the systematic application of environmental, social, and governance disciplines within a business. As regards the benefit of, uh, of CSR, the return on investment for CSR is the impact, of, the positive impact um, with a focus on stakeholders uh, that they can have. And uh, it also focuses on the retention, the loyalty, and the recruitment of employees and customers. And we're, lo we're looking into the effect on reputation as well. Whereas ESG relates to uh, its impact on accessibility to capital and the cost of capital. Uh, it's, I would say that ESG is um, how non-financial indicators can have a financial impact. The audiences between CSR and ESG are different. Uh, for CSR, we're talking about consumers, employees, communities, NGOs, the civil society at large. Whereas uh, when it comes to ESG, um, the primer, the primer audience, the uh, most um, important audience are investors, potential uh, investors, influencers, regulators, uh, benchmarks, indices such as the um, uh, SASB. And when it comes to the long-term um, benefit or uh, effect, um, CSR looks into reputation and uh, reputation management. Whereas when uh, we talk about ESG, risk mitigation, financial stability, financial um, uh, performance is what the long-term benefit perk is. So why bother with ESG? Um, there's a lot of uh, talk about that. There's a lot of uh, controversy that uh, in some places of the world has become very political. Well, when it comes to ESG, what we see is large asset management firms and pension funds are pressured to improve their sustainability practices in material ways. ESG analysis as well within a company can provide valuable in insights and can become a decision-making tool for investors and for the businesses themselves. This is a really nice uh, recent um, graph. Uh, it shows how much ESG funds have grown almost continuously since 2019. And we see, uh, we see the growth across the globe. Um, and this is a um, this is a graph from uh, from Bloomberg, um, an equally interesting one. We see how ESG has been moving uh, slowly but very um, steadily from the periphery to becoming mainstream. Assets are poised to reach forty one trillion US dollars by the end of this year, according to Bloomberg. Growth in the US, as you can see, is leading the charge after Europe had historically been at the forefront. And assets are said to increase by $50 trillion by 2025, from about $35, um, 35 uh, trillion dollars, according to estimates. This growth has been triggered by record-breaking funding flows amid concerns about climate change and other society issues. It is also interesting uh, how um, companies themselves are tackling internally uh, ESG. In a recent survey by uh, Bank of America, Mary Lynch, US executives underestimated the percentage of their company's shares that is held by firms that employ sustainable investing practices and strategies. The average estimate was 5%, whereas the actual percentage is more like 25%. So uh, moving away from good, but often in consequential CSR to an impactful ESG mindset provides significant insights into a company. 
So um, along with uh, ESG, another concept that is very much well um, talked about is the concept of shared value. Shared value is not CSR, it's not corporate uh, social responsibility, nor is it philanthropy. Creating shared value for a company is at the core of its business strategy. This is a graph that uh, most of you, I hope, uh, are familiar with uh, as regards the concept of shared value. Um, it, it is when um, it describes, it illustrates that a company combines its own capacities and capabilities in terms of corporate assets and expertise with business opportunities, but also with the social needs uh, that the company can serve. In that sense, shared value emerges from the core business of a company, not from marginal activities. For instance, a furniture company serves social needs by producing its furniture, but not, for instance, by providing free food to those in need. And this is very um, well captured by a, a famous adage uh, by Henry Ford that says, a business that makes nothing but money is poor business. A lot of discussion has also been um, um, uh, taking place around the concept of triple bottom line, which is also related to ESG. So and this is a really nice uh, graph that illustrates how this is, uh, uh, what this is all about. A triple bottom line looks into not only the economic performance of a business, but also it needs to take account um, um, and assess the full impact of the environmental aspect, aspects and the social aspects. It's a common way to look into a business ESG efforts and it can also, this also translates to what we um, call uh, the, uh, the three P's, profit, people and planet. So um, how we go from CSR to ESG? Let's talk about uh, a little bit about impact, how you create impact. So we're very much familiar with traditional philanthropy, the focus when it comes to uh, traditional philanthropic institution is they address some uh, challenges that society faces through the provision of grants. And what they expect in return is just the social return. When we talk about venture philanthropy, uh, again, the focus is um, uh, address uh, challenges that um, society faces, but the approach is different. The approach includes venture investments, and the return expectation is the social is it is social return focused. When we move to social impact investing, um, what we see is we have the strand of social investing with investments that focus on social and or environmental outcomes and some expected financial return of these investments. And the social return and the sub-market financial market rate is the return expectation. When we talk about impact investment, the investments have an intent, are focused on having um, a return on social and or environmental as well as financial return, ESG return. And um, there's a lot of talk about sustainable and responsible investing. Uh, this is how you can adapt, how you can shift the ESG, the environmental, social and governance practices in order to enhance, to leverage the value or to mitigate uh, practices and to protect value. Again, this is financial market uh, rate focused. And what is interesting to see is that traditional CSR falls into the traditional philanthropy, into venture philanthropy and some parts of social investing, whereas ESG is really social investing, impact investing, and social and responsible investing. The two, both CSR and ESG, have an overlap, and this is the social investing part, So, uh, which is very, uh, very interesting. This is a graph by OECD, and um, 
and I think it's a, a very good representation of um, of how CSR and ESG can uh, be together in what uh, sense they can create impact, but also how um, how these are different concepts and different practices. The Institute for Sustainable Development has been uh, involved in ESG uh, and sustainability, sustainable development for more than five years now. And we, uh, what we do um, um, through projects and through uh, technical uh, capacity building um, projects and trainings is uh, we provide guidance to governments, to, um, to companies, uh, both uh, regional and global and also to, um, to academia. We provide training to companies, executive um, ex education, and uh, we provide tailored trainings in, uh, in different uh, modes of, um, um, uh, through different educational channels. Um, another additional feature of the work we do is ESG assessments, reporting, and audits. So, uh, what we have seen uh, with um, working with um, with companies in the last years is the need and the challenge to transi transition from to shift from uh, CSR traditional CSR to ESG, either because the market. Uh, requires that, or their um, investors, or their uh, regulate, um, or their uh, re regulators uh, in the U.S. or in the in the EU or in uh, other parts of the world, especially Asia, they need, and they also feel the the uh, sense and the pressure that this will become obligatory. ESG reporting will become obligatory in the coming years. So some tips of advice on how to make this transition from CSR to ESG is to actually uh, focus on the shift from good to have to must have. Um, just renaming, and we've seen this a lot, especially in the in Europe. Just renaming the CSR reports into uh, ESG reports is not enough. And sometimes, when you do that, uh, you can you could be blamed for uh, greenwashing. Um, a company should also measure what investors and stakeholders are looking for. So, in most cases, what we see is that companies have to monitor and record the risk factors and adapt mitigation strategies in terms of ESG and especially climate change. They also have to ensure visibility on investors' ra um, radar. So they have to get started with the ESG reporting, even though in some cases it's not obligatory. They have to start publishing information on their websites, both for investors and their stakeholders. They have to seriously start making ESG disclosures. And uh, what is also important, and this is a major shift from CSR reporting to ESG reporting, is that they have to shift, they have to transition to quantifiable metrics. So companies and their sustainability ESG teams or ESG chief ESG officer, they have to start understanding the standards that are in the market and they're acceptable in the industry that they work in, but also materiality. Uh, material issues are also important they, and they, uh, the team, the sustainability team has to understand it. So this is all uh, from my part. Thank you so much. I know we have some time for some questions from, from James. Well, Christina, this was most interesting. Uh, this shift from CSR to ESG has so many implications. I would say there's Thank one you. thing I find important on the CSR side uh, which 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 I've worked on, which is co connecting purpose of the company to profit, because bringing this together provides a foundation for proceeding with CSR and now ESG activities. Uh, and there is a, this foundation still needs to be there. Uh, do you think that ESG enables you to do that, or is it more of the overall CSR approach? So uh, what we have seen uh, in recent conversations with um, 
um, with uh, fund managers and with um, with companies is that uh, they have there is a challenge to transition from uh, CSR to ESG, but also something that um, ESG, the three pillars of ESG, ES and G, are uh, sometimes competing with each other. However, uh, at the very core of ESG, uh, just like CSR, purpose and profit, financials and how you do well and how you, your, the core of your business is aligned with, uh, with people and the planet. And of course, your financial performance is there. And I don't see that there's a conflict between, between the, among the E, the S and the G. Um, on the other hand, what we have seen from audits and assess, ESG audits and assessments that we have performed for funds in the Mediterranean region is the fact that uh, if you do not do well on E, um, if you're not transparent, for instance, in you know in the disclosures you make about your waste management or your uh, water discharges, then most probably you're not going to be very transparent when it comes to your governance issues or the social practices or the welfare of your employees. So. I think that um, uh, purpose and doing good is there in ESG, just like in uh, in uh, CSR. But um, what we see is that uh, ESG has to be measurable, and there shouldn't be a focus just on the environmental aspects of uh, of E of ESG. It has to be it's a holistic approach, and normally uh, you have to do very well at all three pillars in order to to be ESG compliant. I couldn't agree more. Um, CSR is, is more general, and it's great that ESG has become much more specific to provide results and measurable results. Uh, it's true that companies have trouble taking all this seriously together, and one of their big concerns is having a good reputation, greenwashing and all that. Um, but if you look at companies today, because there are difficulties with the E, S, and G, which aspects do you think companies are taking more seriously? Well, uh, I think that uh, everything has to do with regulations. So because this is not com um, compulsory yet or mandatory, um, some uh, companies focus more, more on the environmental aspect. And uh, we see that, you know, they focus on carbon emissions only. So they uh, they have ratings on their ESG reports that um, have to do that are uh, aligned with uh, carbon emissions and how they become net zero. I think that the, um, this is a huge misunderstanding. Uh, the social issues, the governance issues of a, of a company are equally important and they have to be looked into. Uh, governance issues, especially in Europe, are becoming much more uh, important and we see that with you know, the EU directives on um, on how many women you have uh, on a board uh, in companies, uh, and this is mandatory to have enough women uh, in, in the board. And uh, with the um, diversity issues uh, being um, uh, more prominent across uh, on both sides of the Atlantic, I think that the the governance issues and the social issues will become much more prevalent. Couldn't agree more. This is a wonderful presentation and we thank you very much. Uh, this will help give a lot of guidance to, I'm sure, many companies who are seeking to go in the right direction. So we thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your contribution. And we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. Hopefully we see each other in the near future again in a panel. Let's hope. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.